Hey guys and welcome back to another Tasty Blender tutorial. Today we are taking a look at rigid body systems. We'll be making eyes in a jar, just in time for Halloween. In any case, there will be a free resource file in the description of this video, so make sure to check it out and download it for yourself. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment, make sure to subscribe, it helps me out a lot. So let's get into the video. All of the shortcuts are going to be visible in the bottom left corner right here. I'm also using a shortcut scheme that is from Blender 2.7. So some of the shortcuts might vary. In any case, let's start. I'm going to press one on my numpad, shift A and add a UV sphere. This UV sphere, I'll change the segments to be 16 and the rings are going to be eight. When I'm done, I'm just going to press R, X, then type in 90, press enter. So I have rotated it for 90 degrees. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to face select. So I'll have my face select in the top left, face select, press C, and then you can also increase and decrease the size of your brush and then just left click to choose what you want. In this case, I'm choosing the inner circle and the second circle. I'm going to press I to inset and just drop it inside like that. I've also hold control so it pushes everything down. Right at this stage, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go under my material properties and I'm going to add two materials. So material number one is going to be the eyeball and material number two is going to be the iris. I'm going to also add another one and this one I'll name pupil. We've done this at this stage because it's going to be way easier to control and to just duplicate everything. We're saving a bunch of time right now. So the eyeball is going to remain nice and white. The iris, however, since we have selected our inner circles, we can just press assign and this is going to assign the color of the iris. You can change the base color by clicking on it, changing it to, let's say, blue. Let's go to viewport shading to make sure that our colors are working. Now, next stage is going to be selecting the inner circle and this is going to be the pupil. So I'm going to press again, I hold control and drop it inside like that. I'm going to choose the pupil material now and press assign again. I'm going to go to the base color and change it to a black one like that. And there's our eye. Now I can press control one, put in a subdivision modifier W to shade smooth. However, you can see we have some bleeding right here and there's a very easy way of fixing that. I'm going to go under my modifier step and turn off the modifier in real time by clicking on the monitor. I'm gonna to go to my edge select in the top left, shift, alt, and then right click or left click, depending on your scheme. So select just this edge. I'm gonna press N, go to item, and then mean crease, increase to one. I'll repeat the same thing for this outer circle. So between the blue and the white. So I'm gonna choose that edge as well and increase the main crease or mean crease to one. Let me open up again the subdivision like that. And you can see that it's actually dividing and not letting the colors bleed into each other. Increase the levels viewport. You can see the eye is nice and thick. We got our eye. What do we do now? Well, now we create our receptacle. So GZ, let's move this bad boy up, up, up. Shift A, add a cylinder like that. And I'm going to push that cylinder upwards. I want to scale just on the X and the Y. So I'm going to press S shift Z and that's going to scale our cylinder just on the X and the Y. Let me make a jar like this diameter. Numpad one again, press tab to go into your edit mode. Z for wireframe. So you can see all of these bad boys. Press B for box select and just select the bottom vertices. We can pull these bad boys down to our X line right here. Let's zoom out, see what's happening. Choose the top edge, GZ, and pull it up like this. Let's go back into solid view. So right now our cylinder looks like this. I'm gonna press E to extrude it. I'm gonna pull it up like that and then S, Shift Z, scale it on the X and the Y, and then press E again, pull it up again, S, Shift Z, and now pull it out, like so. At this point, we can press X and delete the faces, so we end up with an empty receptacle. Perfect. So this is our empty jar. Now we have to do just a couple of things to it. While I'm in object mode, it's very important to press Control A to reset the scale, or rather apply the scale, and Shift Control Alt C origin to geometry. 
You can find that also in the object set origin, origin to geometry. You can also find the apply scale, rotation, all transforms in the object submenu. And this is very important because otherwise the calculations of the rigid bodies wouldn't work perfectly. Let's go into front view again. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to select the bottom loop again. Press control B to bevel and then drag your mouse outside. Now I want to have a relatively low edge. So I'm just going to scroll, increase the edge, drag my mouse. So I have, let's say a bottom of the jar like that. For the top part, I'm just going to bevel this part. So this top edge, control B, bevel it like that. And maybe I'm going to bevel this edge as well. Control B, bevel it like that. Press control one or two to add the subdivision. And we can also add a modifier. Let's say a solidify modifier. We can pull it in or pull it out, whichever you prefer. In my case, I'm just going to use the one that it's going towards the inside. You can also notice that if you put the solidify first, the edge is going to change. And if you don't like the edge, you can add a bevel and you can pull the bevel between the solidify and the subdivision and then just regulate the amount of beveling to have a sharper edge. But that is just your personal choice. We're good with our bevels. Go into front view Z. Let's check if everything is perfect. It's working fine. We can basically make the thickness a bit lower, something like that this should work. So we have our receptacle, basically our jar, we have our little eye over here. Now it's time to create a rigid body system. So I'm going to go into my physics settings on the right with my jar selected, I'm going to click on rigid body. And this is going to be a passive type, meaning it's going to stay in place, but it's still going to respond to physics and the shape. I'm going to change it to mesh. The source, however, it's going to be not deformed, but final. And as you can see, it's taken into account all of the modifiers. While the deform one is just deformation shape keys, deform modifiers and base is just the base mesh. So I'm going to choose the final one. Sensitivity, we can pull it to 0 0.005. Sometimes if you put a too low of a margin of sensitivity, you need to adjust some other settings. But if you keep it, let's say relatively high, you shouldn't have any object that escape your enclosure. So right now, if I press play, nothing is happening, of course, because we need a active rigid body. And this is going to be our eye. So I'm going to add a rigid body and you can already see that it's moving. And if I go into wireframe, you can see it fell perfectly inside of our jar. So basically we don't need to do anything. We will leave it in active. We'll leave it in dynamic. Convex hole is working fine and source deform, just the deformation modifiers. We don't need to add the final one because we can have some issues when it comes down to calculations. So it might take a long while before it calculates everything. So now we want a bunch of eyes. So how do we approach that? There are several ways you could do Alt D and then just duplicate this, but I will show you a different approach. Before we do that, I'm just going to lower the levels of the viewport, let's say to one. Otherwise we might have a bit of lag. And now I'm going to start adding arrays. However, make sure that the subdivision is always the last link in the chain, because otherwise you might have some issues. I'm going to divide the screen on top like that. And the one on the right, I'm going to press seven on my numpad. And that way I enter top down view G and then move these bad boys a bit more towards the center and then adjust the distance between them like so. And now I'm going to press shift D while hovering over the array. And this is going to duplicate that array. However, I don't want to work on the X. I want to work on the Y. So I'm going to press zero. This is going to be zero. And the next one, I is going to be one, or I can adjust it to be a bit higher, something like that. So we have the Y on top and we can shift the duplicated again, drop the Y to zero and the Z to one. And this is going to create this little cube of eyes. G move it backward. Maybe we can scale it down a bit. So it fits inside of this inner circle of the jar, something like that scale, reset the scale. Don't forget to reset the scale control a. However, now if we press play, you'll notice something very mm, not good happens in the sense of everyone is following the original eye. 
we're gonna choose a number of eyes maybe we want another top row maybe another one so we have in all what is that 16 eyes and now i'm gonna apply all of these modifiers Control a Control a Control a like that i'm not gonna apply the subdivision however now i'm gonna go into edit mode press a twice so everything is selected and then press p separate by loose parts now before you click anything exit edit mode and press shift control alt c origin to geometry so all of these bad boys have the point of geometry of their own and this is a trick i often use when it comes to randomizing the position and the rotation and scale of things so i'm going to press space or f3 and i'm going to type randomize transform object transform randomize transform now I can choose a different location. However, I don't feel like playing with the location, but I'm going to influence the rotation of the X. So I'm going to put that rotation to be 180 degrees. The Y is going to be 180 degrees as well. And the Z is going to be 180 degrees as well. So you can see it completely randomized the position of the eyes or rather the rotation of the eyes. We can also do a change in the scale. However, if I press 1.2 right now, you can see it squishes them in a very funny manner. Just tick the scale even, and now it's going to scale them evenly on all three axes, each one separately. I'm going to keep it at 1.29. I'm just making sure that they're not falling out of my selection. And since we were using the same rigid body settings for all of them, if we press play, Z, we can see all of them fall inside nicely that's perfect actually works perfectly fine if you've made a mistake and if you didn't let's say manage to copy all of the rigid body settings there's a very easy way you can do that just select all of the eyes and then click on the eye that has the rigid body and you can press f3 again or space and just copy rigid body object rigid body copy from active and that is going to copy the settings from the active object. Let's see how this bad boy looks in our viewport shader. Well, it seems fun enough. I want to turn your attention to a very important thing, which is baking. So we need to go under our scene properties, rigid body world, click on this menu and bake the animation. This is very important. And it's because if we don't bake this animation, you might have irregularities in your renders and it's not going to render out properly. So we want to make sure that the baking is working perfectly. Everything is baked and saved so you can enjoy your renders. So now that our animation is baked, let me just select the jar and press H to hide it for now. Press play so we can see what happens to our eyes and they are collecting correctly in our little receptacle. So yeah, this is going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you've learned something new. As always, the source project is available for free in the link in the description. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.